Hey guys, so uh, on this video, I'm gonna be basically going over the PS5 user interface and maybe, you know, just some settings so you guys can see everything um, from booting up all the way to like games and other things and just like settings in general, just so you guys can get an idea um, of like what PlayStation 5 offers. I'll be try I'll try to be as uh, thorough as possible with all the settings and everything. So, um, yeah. So this is a startup. You just press your PS5 controller, the PlayStation button, just like PS4 really. Um, you select this. What's interesting is this: when you push options, you can see you can set your status. You know, show other people that you're online, busy, or appear offline. You can do that right there off the, you know, the thing. Ooh, Buck Snacks is down. <laughs> Buck Snacks. Um, and then down here, if you if you see the power button, you can click on that. You can enter rest mode, turn off PS5, or restart 4. Very similar to the PS4, really. Um, I always leave my PS5 in rest mode whenever I'm done with it so I can download updates. It's pretty much what most people do on PS4 as well. So I don't think that's changed. But again, you always have that option to turn off the PS5 and restart it. So anyways, going into the, the settings, this is basically the home screen. Um, I don't know any way to really change it. I haven't really seen. Uh, I'm sure they'll offer like games and stuff just like PS4 did. Uh, but starting from the top right, you see the time clock. Uh, it's 106 p.m. Pacific time. I live in California, so. Um, you can always change that in the settings. Then you see, so yeah, you see notifications like that come up in the top right. Also, your achievements will also come up in the top right as well. Uh, so we'll start off with the, the profile. Again, you can set your status online. You can see your profile, click on it. You know, it's very similar to PS4, uh, except everything is listed right here. Uh, all the games you've played, 212, like all the games you've actually started up, does not include the ones that you actually own. Uh, friends list, uh, accolades, I'm not really sure what this is, but apparently it's when you're contributing to a community. It's kind of like a thumbs up system in a sense, I would think, uh, whenever you play against other people. So it's like, you know, honorable mentions type of thing. Uh, if you guys have ever played Overwatch, it's got something like that too, where you can, uh, you know, say that a teammate was helpful or, you know, good support or and all that stuff. Uh, shot collar and everything. So this right here is trophies, all your trophies. They apparently changed the trophy power level system. It used to be star ratings, but now they have a new system. So I'm still getting used to it. Um, it still shows all your PS3, PS4, PS5 uh, achievements. So if many of you guys came from PS3, PS4, all the way to PS5, you'll have like tons of them by now. Um, I mainly started uh, from PS4 for PlayStation because I skipped the entire PS3 generation because I had an Xbox 360 and I just played. I used to play just uh, play games on there. Uh, so that's the overview down here. You, you have your quote or whatever. So many games, so little time. This holds true for me because I just have work and school, but I have all these games and it's just like sitting there and becomes uh, all these games end up in my backlog. So I'm trying to commit myself to actually finishing these games on the PS5. Uh, so anyways, when we go over to the games tab, you have the recently played. Uh, I just played Astro's Playroom for a little bit, not too long ago, 18 minutes ago. It shows you how recently you played it, your total play hours as well, one hour. Um, your total progress in completing all the achievements. So, so far I only have like 8% progress toward, 100% completion toward the Platinum. I've earned 6 out of 46. Uh, then you have Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I played it a few hours ago. That's really cool that you can actually see how long ago you, you played this. I'm not, I don't remember PS4 actually having that feature, it just uh, used to tell you your achievements or what was the most recent achievement you got. So down here we also have Marvel's Spider-Man, Marvel's Miles Morales, Devil May Cry, Godfall, and then Demon's Souls, and then my PS4 stuff. Uh, so as you can see, it just kind of overlaps, like an example of Miles. Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales PS4 overlapped with my PS5. So I believe they're two different, they, come, they classify as two different games, the, both the PS4 version and the PS5. So you have two separate lists of achievements. So 
as you can see, they both have 50 achievements total. This is the PS5 version. And then the PS4 version also has 50 achievements total. It also contributes to your overall achievement and you know, your power level. So it's actually very interesting. For people who are completionists, I'm sure they'll play both versions of the same game, whatever is available, just to complete it. Which is, uh, which is interesting, I guess you could say. Um, but it makes sense because, you know, the achievement system came from PS3 to PS4 and then now PS5 and then moving forward. Uh, yeah, all these other games. And then it shows you... It actually, what's interesting is these are PS4 games. And for some way or another, through PlayStation Network, it was able to track how long ago I played this. Apparently 19 days ago. Uh, and I only played 19 hours. Uh, it's not really true. I think I played more than that, I thought. But anyway, it's Neo 2, amazing game. Uh, I played that 27 days ago, according to PlayStation. So it actually tracked my stats from PS4 onto the PS5. It's very interesting that it does this, um, you know? So it's just very, very interesting that I guess somehow internally they always had a tracker, but you can never see it on the PS4. So it's just very, very interesting. Um, anyways, going forward to the friends tab, uh, you have all your friends. It shows whatever they're playing recently at the bottom. Uh, their screen name and then, you know, whether they're a friend or whatever. Uh, some of these are close friends, the uh, re rest of them are just friends. Close friends, obviously you share your real name with each other. Uh, Mr. JP Cruzada, um, pretty good friend of mine. So we talk all the time about games mostly, we're just a bunch of nerds. Um, yeah, and then you have like all these other friends, close friends. Uh, was there anything else down here? So, yeah, going back up to share, uh, if you share something like a video or something, it would show up here. Um, I think I haven't really linked my YouTube to my PlayStation just yet, uh, my PlayStation account. So I think I'll eventually do that. I do intend to buy like a camera so I can stream uh, and play all my PS5 games, uh, probably even PS4 games as well. Uh, again, you see your online status. As you can see, there's more than one way to really set it. You can set it at the home screen or you can set it over here. Uh, you have your edit profile. You can change your name, online ID, profile picture, avatar, cover image about, you know, languages. You can do all of that. And then privacy settings, obviously. You can see who can see you online, who can share what, etc. cetera. Um, who can see you within games, all that stuff. So it hasn't really changed too much from PS4. Um, but yeah, it shows all of this. So going back to that, we're going to go over to the settings. This is going to be a pretty extensive tab. A lot of these settings have not really changed from PS4 days. Um, you still see the, obviously the user guide, you can see that all online, uh, other legal stuff. Uh, accessibility, what's interesting is you have like inverted colors. You can invert screen colors. You can adjust the color correction to see things more clearly. Text size, you can change it. So you have small, normal, large, and very large. As you can see, I just have a normal because this is pretty big. So let's just see if you put it large, it goes that way. Uh, very large, it just, you know, fills it up. I, I know older people are, are, might find it harder to see other people as well. So this is very a very good change. I don't remember if PS4 had it, but I'm just glad to see it here on the PS5. Um, bold text. It's cool because it can bolt everything. Uh, I just have it turned off because I don't really need it. Um, high contrast, adjust the colors of text and backgrounds to improve the clarity of things on the screen. Um, and this doesn't work 100% of the time. Um, auto scroll speed. So I'm not really sure what this is, but you can change it. Oh, okay. So very slow, slow, normal, and fast. This is pretty good setting for my niece because she's still learning how to read. Uh, so this is pretty good. She can like take her time and, as well as, as the fact that it kind of encourages you to read faster. <laughs> just as you can see it's scrolling. Um, but yeah, I just have a normal. I don't, I haven't really seen a lot of this except maybe on the home screen. Um, but yeah, I'll just leave that as is. And then you have reduced motion. So you can reduce motion effects and screen movement for people who get motion sickness. Uh, also people with epilepsy or anything like that, that can trigger those, uh, you know, oncomings, then you can set that and reduce motion and screen movement. Some games have like shaky effects, so I'm sure that would apply to that as well. Uh, you have that scary sounding screen reader, so 
you have. Voice volume, fifty percent. Buttock voice out. Female. Speech speed. Normal. So you can do. Press the up and down button. So you can do slow three. Not selected. Button. Let's try it. Speech speed. <laughs> slow three. <laughs> That's really slow. Speech speed. Slow two. Screen width speed. Slow one. Speech speed. Slow one. Normal. Speech speed. Normal. And fast one. Not so speech and fast three. Fast two. Fast three. Fast four. Fast five. Listen. Up up. Speed speeds. Fast five. Listen. Up up. Up up. Up <laughs> so you get the idea. And then voice type, male or female? Male. Voice type. Male. Button. Press cross to select. To move. Press female. Voice. Speech speed. Image. Voice volume. 50%. Enable screen reader. We're going to turn that off. <laughs> Uh, when you first start off your PS5, actually, uh, this, the online the on screen reader is actually on, and it gives you the option to just turn it off. There's a whole bunch of settings you go through when you first turn on your PS5, um, but I just have this turned off. Obviously, the uh, I don't really need it. Uh, it's for people who can, you know, are hard of seeing, possibly, and they can hear better. So that it's just for that. Um, just it's good accessibility options that they're all here, you know. So it's very good for people who have those uh, disabilities that can, you know, that this actually helps them with. Uh, controllers, you can custom assign your buttons. Uh, obviously, this is made for this controller, um, so we can always, you know, go through customize, enable custom buttons. Let's see, customize button assignments. So you can change them. Um, you can go through and change things like see what each button do, you can reverse them. So if you want the, the control pad on the right side, you can move it on the right side. You want the control pad on, or the buttons on the right, the face buttons, you can move it on the left, and vice versa. You can put the face buttons on the shoulders, etc. So it's actually really cool that you can do that. Uh, you can also switch the left and right analog sticks. So you, typically games control the analog stick with the right stick. You can switch that. So you can control the character with your right and move the camera with your left so it's really cool that I can do that so I'm just gonna turn it off I don't really need it uh, vibration intensity for the controller it's already pretty strong so I would just recommend leaving it on strong uh, yeah so obviously it has the strongest settings you have medium weak and off so people who have like some kind of carpal tunnel syndrome or arthritis and it, vibrations really affect them they can turn that off it's a good option to have uh, trigger effect intensity. This is basically the adaptive triggers that they're talking about. Uh, in a lot of games that I've played on PS5 already, uh, I feel that adaptive trigger uh, from anywhere from swinging from Spider-Man's, you know, web swings, you can feel that trigger pressing back against your, your, you know, your pulling of the trigger. So it's very interesting, especially Astro's Room, you can feel that pressure. So you can set that intensity. So, it does, so you don't have to push in as hard. Again, people with arthritis or people who have uh, other disabilities can still, you know, uh, adjust that. So you can basically turn it off or, you know, increase the intensity or uh, turn off the trigger effect. Obviously you have strong, medium, weak, and off. Then here we have a uh, press and hold delay. So you can hold the PlayStation button uh, as well as the create button. Um, you just have normal and long. It basically means that if you hold it, it takes longer for it to take effect. Uh, if you just hold it normally, you know, normal amount of time to, uh, for the app to create or whatever function you're trying to do to take its effect. It's uh, very useful, I guess. Um, I just want to make sure everything is off. I really just want to leave the settings the way they are, um, mainly because I don't really need them. That's just my personal preference. Obviously everyone's different. Everyone has a game, different gaming experience. So it's always good to have that. 
Uh, closed captions, obviously you have closed captions and then you have closed caption settings. You can display by each content. So by default it's on, but I just have closed captions off. I don't need it again. Um, and then chat transcription. So it converts the voice chat of the other players in the parties and games to text and reads aloud the text you enter to other players. Uh, chat transcription for in-game voice chats is available only for games that support it. This is actually useful for maybe a lot of people if they need it. Uh, but it's cool that it's there. So you can enable chat transcription. Uh, you can set your language, whatever you want. Voice type, again, male or female. Uh, and then this is basically takes me to the web browser and shows me how to navigate. Anyways, um, that's basically how you navigate the web pages. Scroll up, up and down using the right stick. Move pointer. If you guys really are interested, just pause the video and just take a look at it. Anyways, I'm going to close this and go back. Okay, now moving forward to network. Obviously, this is self-explanatory. I have my PS5 connected to my LAN just for the time being so I could download the games much faster. Uh, I have noticed that the download speed for the PS4 to the PS5 is actually much faster than what it used to be on PS4. Uh, apparently more so if it's on, uh, you know, wired setting. So I have it cur currently set to wired because I downloaded a bunch of PS5 games last night. Um, what else? I do intend to um, download more in the future, obviously. So uh, I'll probably go back to the wireless setting just because in this room is far away from my router. So I usually typically use it for the computer, the wired setting, just mainly because I do a lot more work on there. Um, so yeah, it's good to, to know that, um, you know, the PS5, just like the PS4 always has all those options, wired and wireless, uh, Wi-Fi, internet. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, I'm connected to Xfinity. Uh, I do have a one gigabyte, uh, gigabit internet speed. So, uh, there's a lot of options out there for people now, especially introductory prices with AT&T. And so I think I've seen like 50, $60 for gigabit now. Uh, it's actually pretty decently affordable now, so um, if you guys are interested, take a look at that. PlayStation, view PlayStation network status, so you can see network status. If it's up or down, apparently here it shows all services are running. And then you can test your internet connection. Uh, again, settings, you can connect to the internet or set up your internet connection. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, yeah. Then there's users and accounts. Um, you know, it shows your account, sign in and all that stuff. Privacy, privacy settings, um, data you provide. You can always look through all of that. Link with other services so you can link your, your oh, so YouTube is linked to my um, channel. That's interesting. I didn't know that. Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, Spotify. I'll probably start a Twitch channel just so you guys can see like Get me streaming games, uh, Demon Souls, and a bunch of other games. Um, I just haven't really been into streaming much. I uh, just honestly didn't really know how to do it. This, all of this YouTube thing is new to me too. Uh, just people suggested I try, I do it because I just have so much gaming content to share. So I mean, why not? I guess uh, you can do console sharing and offline pay, play. Um, Restore licenses this is very good if your game if your system cannot recognize uh, your, the games that you own. You can always restore licenses and um, it resets them, kind of resets the settings. And then you can sign out as well. Uh, login settings uh, you can log into PS Five automatically. Um, I think I just have it to log in anyway, but obviously I have to choose the username and it's just me on the system anyway. So yeah. And then you can always you uh, remove or create new users. So this is very good for people who go onto other people's PlayStations. They come over and they want to have their games accessible to them. They can always log in and delete their username. It's actually really cool. Family and parental controls. Obviously, PS5 console restrictions, ma uh, family management. You can do all of that. Um, I obviously I don't need parental controls. I'm an adult, so I don't really need it. Uh, system software update and settings, update system software, download update files automatically, etc. Uh, report system software errors automatically, error history, data transfer, backup and restore, reset options. 
uh, HDMI link, so I have it both set to on. So whenever I turn on my system, it turns on the TV and all that stuff. Um, yeah, language, obviously English, input language for keyboard and every other setting is also English. Uh, date and time, as you can see, California time, Pacific, 125. Remote play, uh, if you have a PS5 remote play, you can play from your computer or any other device that are, uh, supports P uh, PlayStation remote play. So you have to click on that and then link the device to whatever. Uh, so you can play your PS5 anywhere else. Um, power saving features, you can set a timer to when you want to turn off your PS5. Um, it also shows you features available in rest mode. An example, you know, supply the power, stay connected to the internet, and enable turning on PS5 from network. Uh, set time until controllers turn off. I just have it set to don't turn off. Um, because, you know, I'm not really going anywhere. And I'm within distance to just charge my controller and play uh, in my room. So uh, it's not a big issue for me. For other people, it might be. Um, web browsers, you, obviously, you can not allow cookies. So a lot of stuff will not load on the web browser. Um, enable JavaScript, delete cookies, clear website data, and prevent cross-tracking. What's interesting is I don't think... Uh, I'm not sure if I've seen it, but I haven't really dealt with the... Uh, the web browser on the PS5 yet, so yeah. Uh, so I have extended storage connected to uh, my PS5 actually. Um, there it is. So yeah, uh, if it's not recognizing it, just click on that and then it recognizes it. So this has all my PS4 games. Obviously, see, uh, obviously as you can see, the external hard drive is a bit slower than the SSD. Yeah, these are all my PS4 games on my external hard drive. You can see uh, all the information, the size of it, as well as, uh, you know, um, apparently it's only recognizing everything as of November 14th. Um, okay. But yeah, it shows you PS4 or PS5 um, on your hard drives. You can choose. And you can also show items that you can move between hard drives. Uh, so I always have it set to always install PS4 games to my extended storage because I don't want it to take up space on my SSD. In order to play PS5 games, you have to install them on the SSD. So that's, um, you know, it's, uh, you have to use the PS5 game and it has to be on the, the internal SSD for it to be used. So that's just how the, the games are made, um, using that, you know, the fast load times and everything. So it expects that. SSD. My only worry is that if the system is so reliant on the internal SSD, um, I hope I never ever witness that, um, like the SSD corrupting or messing up because then it might, I, I think and personally I, I could be wrong, but that would affect your overall use of the system entirely basically. So a lot of the games on PS5 are built for that, um, the internal SSD to utilize that for faster load times. Uh, obviously you can see games and apps on the internal SSD. Yeah, it still takes about the, it's actually still a lot faster than the PS4. Cause I remember when you click on the PS4 hard drives, it takes forever just to load up that information. I think the longer, the older the console was, the longer it seemed to have taken. But as you can see, like a lot of the PS5 games are like 50 to 60 gigabytes or less. Godfall, it's like 23.6. Marvel Spider-Man about 40 gigs, Valhalla about 45, Bug Snacks 8, 8 gigs. So uh, Astro Playroom is a game that comes with PS5 and it's kind of like a tech demo, but it's also a platformer. It's actually pretty good. Yeah, they put a lot of effort into it. So I always uh, ask everybody, just check it out, give it a try, it's, it's a really good game. Um, yeah, so going forward, I'll, I'm gonna be playing a lot of games and uh, also upload some videos regard, um, for those games. So you can move items. I've noticed you can only move like these apps for some reason. Obviously you cannot move the PS5 games, which is kind of a bummer. Um, I'm actually really wondering what's gonna happen when I get closer to running out of storage space, which might be sooner, obviously, rather than later. Um, so when I get to that point, <laughs> I guess I'll cross that bridge when I, when I get there. Um, yeah, so. You can obviously select all of them or select whatever, or delete whatever you want, etc. So that's enough of that. Um, sound, 
you can have the sound, um, the input device, I have the sound coming from the microphone here. There's some sounds, but everything else comes from the TV. Uh, if you have a surround system, use that. I have a surround system in my living room, but I haven't brought it in here just because uh, I kind of just want to leave it out in the living room. I might get like a sound bar uh, on Black Friday or something like that. I'm just kind of waiting. Um, I mean, a PS5 is a <laughs> big enough purchase for a lot of people, so I don't want that to, I don't want to keep spending right now. Uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, adjust microphone level, you can adjust it. Uh, obviously it's picking up my voice right now. This is really kind of cool and kind of creepy because uh, it's picking up your voice even when you're talking with someone in the room or just by yourself. I, I hope it's not recording this. I don't think it is, but as you can see, it's recording my voice level. That's, uh, yeah. I'm actually pretty far away from my microphone, so it's, it's pretty good that I can pick it up like that. So yeah, it's interesting. And you can obviously adjust your microphone level at the bottom. Uh, microphone status when logged in, it's always on. Uh, oh, so I guess I could mute it. Um, so that's good. At least it won't like listen to you like Big Brother or something. Uh, microphone status when starting chat or broadcast. Um, you can leave it on or you can switch it to mute um, so that you know other people don't hear you bleeding, <laughs> basically. Um, yeah. HDMI device obviously to my TV automatically switches HDMI device to TV shows you all of this stuff. Uh, if I had the either the surround sound or like the three pulse audio headphones that for the PS5 or any other headphones, it would show this up. It wouldn't be grayed out like this, but because I'm using internal TV speakers, I just uh, you won't you can't really adjust that. But it's interesting, you can adjust the 3D audio, uh, turn it on or off, and then audio profile, you can adjust that. And then uh, obviously output all or some of the sound to the headphones. Uh, home screen music I have on because I, I like it that it's it's really basic. It's uh, kind of reminiscent of the PS4, but more of a, feels like it has a darker tone, if you guys have been paying attention to it. Uh, it's really nice, it's kind of soothing yet mysterious at the same time. Uh, obviously sound effects when you you know, go through all the menus and stuff. You can turn it on or off. Uh, audio format priority, linear PCM. I just, I don't really mess with it really. Uh, I just leave it as is. Um, feel free to play around with it. You can change the volume of your headphones as well as the controller speaker. Uh, just bear with me, we're almost there. <laughs> you guys can skip around to any part of the video you like. Um, feel free. That's what, you know, these videos are for. So video output, Video output information shows you it's in 4K, 60 hertz. Um, it switches to 120 hertz on some games, but by default it's like 60. This TV that I have, the LG CX, is actually 120 hertz. So, yeah. Uh, color format RGB, HDCP 2.3. Um, 2.3, is that the new HDMI 2.3? I, I think it is. Um, I think that's what that is, HDCP, yeah. I think that's 2.3, because my TV is also 2.3 as well. Um, yeah, HDR is supported and it shows all those frequencies. As you can see, um, my TV can go up to 120 hertz all the way at the bottom. Same with non-HDR 120 hertz. So it's really cool. Um, certain games support six, uh, 120 hertz uh, and the other games are like 60 hertz. So I think, uh, and also PS, some PS4 games, like I think Ghost of Tsushima support that boost mode. So it increases your frames. Um, probably looks amazing on PS5. I haven't really tried it yet. Um, I have it on my hard drive, but um, I'll try it out one of these days. Yeah, so that's that. Resolution, I just leave it on automatic. 4K video transfer rate, automatic. You can change all of this stuff. HDR, adjust HDR, deep color. Some of the stuff you actually change when you first launch your PS5 for the first time. So um, it's good that it's there. Screen, you can adjust your display area to fit on your TV, and then you can also dim the screen while uh, inactive, basically for TVs to prevent some kind of burnout or burn in, I should say, sorry. Uh, to prevent burn in or, you know, static screen images are not good for like OLEDs, uh, supposedly, but I've noticed that more and more people are, are having a little less of that issue now with burn in, so it's not a really big deal anymore. Um, a lot of these new TVs, these OLEDs and 
uh, from both uh, LG and Sony have implemented like different techniques to prevent burning. So it's pretty good. It's not a big concern for me really. Um, a lot of the games I play that have moving images and uh, barely any static text. And I haven't really noticed anything. I've had this TV since like September, so yeah. Uh, Blu-ray disc data. I don't know what that is. There's no Blu-ray in there. So, oh, so if you have your Blu-ray in the Blu-ray drive for this physical PS5, it would show that data, what kind of data, uh, disc it is and everything. I haven't really tried. Again, I mostly stream everything online or what have you in this day and age. Um, yeah, so if you are, if your Blu-ray disc has like internet features and other features, uh, extra features for your disc, then you can click on this and it'll take you directly to those features using that, which is pretty cool. Um, accessories, you have Bluetooth accessories, you can turn them off or turn on. Uh, controllers, as you can see, you can increase the volume for this uh, controller, the vibration intensity, uh, trigger effect. I think we went over some of this anyway. Uh, there is also a media remote that comes with the PS5 that you can buy separately. Uh, it looks nice. It's very clean look to it. I don't remember how much it is, but people who don't want to use the controller for dealing with all their Netflix, Hulu, etc., uh, they can buy that media remote. It's actually, you know, probably better since they're used to TV remotes anyway. Uh, keyboard type, uh, English, you can... I don't know what any of that means, but if you guys know, please let me know. Um, oh, okay, so key repeat, I think is what it is, is that when you hold down a key, it types the same letter, right? So you can have like a delay on that or something. I think that's what it means, but don't quote me on it. Uh, mouse, you can have a keyboard and mouse to this. So obviously mouse right-handed, you can increase the pointer speed, uh, fast, normal, slow. It's kind of like changing your DPI, I guess, but I mean, I have yet to try that. Uh, there's also a PlayStation camera you can buy third party, which I will eventually get so I can stream uh, straight from my PS5, really. Uh, just stream on Twitch or something like that. Um, yeah, you can adjust it, adjust the PlayStation camera. Eventually we'll do that. Um, save data and game app settings. So obviously all your cloud storage stuff, you can see it. Um, what? <laughs> this is cool. Uh, so game presets, you can change the difficulty for all your games. Uh, you can leave it as default, which is probably normal. Or you can set it to hard or hardest. In my case, I will set it to hardest because I love a challenge. Um, you can always recommend your PlayStation 5 to go to that game mode that you want. I just leave it on game default because sometimes the resolution mode is not as great as performance and vice versa. So I just... I just like to decide in my game and after testing out both um, versions and seeing which is better for me, in my personal opinion. Some people like high fidelity. They want like ray tracing and all that stuff. Okay, great. That's awesome. Uh, but some people just like frames uh, and they want to increase, boost their frames as best as possible. They don't care as much as how great the game looks. And believe me, the games look amazing just by the way they are by default. Ray tracing on or off. PS5, uh, the frame rates are like amazing. Uh, first person view, you can change that. Vertical camera movement, horizontal, horizontal camera movement. Uh, third person view, same thing. Uh, subtitles and audio, you, I just have it left to the game to decide. I can always adjust it in the game instead of doing it here. But it's cool that it gives you the option to do it here. So, um, you know, you don't have to do it in the game. That's pretty cool. Uh, audio language, just leave it same as console. Um, you can obviously change it if your audio language on the system is one you can set it something different in the game, etc. So it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so anyways, automatic updates, I have them both on auto download and then if you have it in rest mode, it auto installs games or updates or whatever. So I just leave it on. Um, spoiler warnings, if you're streaming a game, uh, it gives that spoiler warning and blocks the content, I guess you could say. So um, yeah, I just, I guess I, it says display a spoiler label or hide content that contains potential spoilers. This applies only to PS5 games. So you can have that and then, um, or you could set it to everything you haven't seen yet. So you can have spoilers on or off. That's cool. I have it set to off because I really hate spoilers. It kind of kills my mood to play a game. I'd rather just find out by myself. Um, I know a lot of people are like that. Some people are not. So 
it's good that you have options here. Game status, you can always, you know, sync with your sync with your PlayStation Network, your status and trophies, uh, if it's like not synced, your profile. It sometimes happens. It happened like once to me on PS4 for some reason. Um, but yeah, it's good that it's there now. Notifications, you can turn on how much of what notification you get. Um, you can show a preview, kind of like what pops up. Uh, and then you can click on the PlayStation button and see more detail on that preview. Um, it shows you other things like when your friends go broadcasting or they come online or whether they start up a game, all that stuff. It shows trophies. Um, it'll hide a trophy during uh, videos. So mm -hmm. you can change all of this stuff, friend requests, um, messages, voice chat, accolades. So if you're broadcasting, this is really cool that you can set each and every one of these on or off or however you want it. Uh, captures and broadcasts, this is cool, Short shortcuts, uh, eventually I'll delve into this, I just haven't really messed with it. Um, yeah, so video quality by default is 1920 by 1080 at 30 frames. You can always change that. Um, I will personally have it at 60 frames. But obviously some games look better on 30. Don't quote me, I don't think any game looks great on 30. I'm a... I come from PC, so 16 above is how I go. So the more frames I have, the better. Um, so I would just, personally, I would go with 60. I, I Anything below 60 it just looks um, really sluggish. Although Bloodborne is a game that ran in 30 frames, and it was amazing. If they were somehow to be able to port it to PS5 or remake it or remaster it, kind of like the same treatment that Demon Souls got, and it would be at 60 frames and the game difficulty and everything would adjust in the frames would adjust to 60 frames per second. Then like the animation frames if it would adjust to 60 frames, it would be amazing. And I would love to play Bloodborne. And Bloodborne is one of the games that I actually platinum um, way back when. Audio, uh, you can include voice chat audio, camera overlays for your broadcast, chat to speech, etc. You can show, you know, trophies and screenshots, videos, how long it, you know, stays up, etc. Um, so yeah, that's basically that. The settings here, you can search for whatever you're looking for, game, movie, etc. It's cool that it's there. Um, as you can see, media, games, players, other people. So you can search here for even people that you want to add or you're looking to follow, or you know, you want to see their stream, etc. So you can do it all here. Uh, so going here, we have the games tab. This is a PlayStation store. It's very basic right now. So what's interesting is you click this and it goes right to what's down there. <laughs> so obviously, you know, it has this uh, layout. So basically every uh, box you go over has that in the background. So it's pretty cool. It's a good change. Uh, the PS Plus collection is really cool because uh, it gives you a bunch of free games uh, for not only monthly games, but as well as like the PlayStation Collection. So here are, is the PlayStation Collection. If you have PlayStation Plus and you're subscribed to it, you get all of these games for free. You can change them all. So if you, let's say I click see all, these are all the games that you have that's available to you. Uh, a lot of these I already bought way back when, so it's not much to me, but it would probably be amazing treasure trove of really amazing games like Persona 5, Resident Evil 7, Uncharted 4, Last of Us Remastered, Bloodborne, uh, Ratchet and Clank, you know, so you would get all of these games for free if you have PlayStation Plus. It's just like, I think it's a perk of them giving to pe people to people for free if they have the PlayStation Plus uh, subscription. Uh, I currently do have the PlayStation Plus subscription basically because I used PS4 a lot and now obviously PS5. So all of these games I now have because they're just giving it away to people who have PS Plus for free. It's kind of like an incentive. So it's really cool. These are actually, a lot of these games are really good. Personally, not, not Final Fantasy XV. I hate that game. Um, but that's just me. Some people love that game. But anyways, uh, Fallout 4 is all right. Mortal Kombat X, pretty good. God of War, you know, Crash Bandicoot, Monster Hunter, all that stuff. So I love Monster Hunter. Um, I'll probably be playing Iceborne again eventually. Um, but yeah, these are all the games you can get for PlayStation Plus collection. 
Uh, then you have Bug Snacks right now for this month. It's free up until January 4, 2021. Uh, this is one of the ones that was um, advertised in the PlayStation trailers. It's very unique and goofy, but I've been hearing a lot of good things about this game. I'm going to play this with my niece. Um, she'll probably enjoy the hell out of this. Uh, Shadow of War is a monthly PS4 game, as well as Hollow Knight. You guys know that. Um, yeah, so it shows it all also here. If you scroll down, Bug Snacks. Um, play online with your friends. So if you click that, you can see a bunch of multiplayer games that you can play online with other people. It's cool that it just kind of like puts it in different categories now. Um, discounts, um, exclusive packs with PS Plus members. I've never been a proponent of DLC and other cosmetic crap that they try to sell you for money that should have been in the game already. But anyways, yeah, I'm totally against that. Exclusive discounts, this is nice. So all the discounts are all in one place now. Uh, unlike the PS4, I don't see the, the screensavers and avatars and all that crap that used to be on there. Every time you used to go to the discounts tab on the PS4, it went, it went straight to the, the themes as well as the avatars and backgrounds and all that crap. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Where's my exclusive games or whatever discounts? Um, I don't know what this is. Game help? Um... I guess for PS5 games, it's kind of okay, I guess. I'm not sure what that is. If you guys know, just write it in the comments. Um, obviously, your PS Plus subscription plans. Um, it's always best to buy uh, a 12 months if you're, if you're thinking about 12 months during like Black Friday or anytime there's like a, a holiday sale. Uh, I think they're going to have PS Plus on sale for sure during Black Friday. So if you guys are interested in all those PS Plus collection games and other things like that, all the perks of having a PS Plus subscription, then I would totally recommend buying the 12 months when it's on sale for like 40 bucks. It's actually much better than paying full $60 price. Uh, that's just my opinion. It's a little thing that I've you know picked up on with my time in PS4. There's always like discounts. So if you ever see that 12 month, and you're interested in uh, extending your PS Plus subscription, buy it. And then if you see it again that same year, buy it again because it stacks up. So it's pretty cool like that. Unless they change it, obviously. It used to stack up, but I'm not sure if it still does or not. Um, so if you have one subscription and you buy another one, it stacks up for the following year. And you buy another one, it stacks up for the following year. It used to be like that, but I'm not sure if they changed it now. Um, subscribe to PS Plus monthly games, it shows you. So if you click here, uh, it shows you the most recent games here. So I hate how it keeps going back up. It, that really sucks. Uh, I wish it would just stay to the tab that I'm at. Uh, about PlayStation Plus and usage terms, all that stuff. Um, yeah, so then it shows you what here, what's popular on the main screen. Um, on the PlayStation Store, you scroll down, it shows you what's hot. Uh, all of these games, Watch Dogs, Pathless, Pathless just came out. I think I saw a notification for a review for that. I don't know. Uh, but these are all the coming soon games. Horizon Forbidden West, looking forward to that. Ratchet and Clank as, as well. Deathloop, Eternal. These are all the games that were advertised on the PlayStation, you know, when they first unveiled it. And they had the PlayStation conference. Uh, these are all the games. Um, that were there. Temtem is a PC Pokemon-ish type game. Um, it's going to be here on December 7th. December 7th, coming out of Early Access and going on there, so you can pre-order that if you're interested in that. Stray is a game where you play as a cat, I think. And it's, it's like cyberpunk-ish. It's really kind of cool. Like, everyone's a robot. <laughs> um, yeah, it's kind of cool, actually. It does. Would be interested to see where this goes. And then Devil Inside, this is also, I was interested in this one too. Um, so this is how a video works. You just click on it and just starts playing it. So yeah, you can probably just see this on YouTube. I was just very interested in this game because it's just kind of like, kind of reminds me of Witcher 3 or Monster Hunter for some reason. Not really sure. course tentacles I 
I'll let this video end and play if you guys won't want. Just fast forward it. <laughs> Shoot a bear in his ass. Little devil inside. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah. So when you click on a game, you can scroll down and see I'll see all the other information about the game. It shows up in a window like that. It's really cool. Uh, as you can see, you discover more. So it's more monthly picks. Kind of like a lot of the PS4. They're just implementing it here. DLC crap to expand your game. Like I said, it should have been in the game to begin with, but I, I can understand from a developer standpoint, but I can also understand from a gamer perspective, like who wants to pay for a game you already pay, paid and pay more on top of that. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, here you can see the PS5 games, just the PS5 games, what's on PS5 or what's on kind of becoming for pre-order. So I think this is what they have right now. Um, some of these are pre-orders like Deathloop, Hitman 3, Times 10, etc. Other ones like Valhalla, it'll show that it's in your library or it's installed, as you can see. Demon Souls, Lux Axe, etc. Uh, I'm really thinking about picking up Sackboy, because I love a good platformer. So, really thinking about picking that up. I have Watch Dogs Legion on my PC, so for now I'll just play it on there if I really want to. Um, if you guys are interested, I can you know stream that off the PC. It's a lot easier, I think, maybe. Um, but again, I'm not really... I'm very new to streaming, very new to making videos, as you guys can probably tell, so, yeah. Uh, free-to-play games, shows you all your free-to-play games, um, you know, Warface, Paladins, Warframe, Apex, Fortnite, etc. Uh, and then it shows you PS Plus games, so again, it goes back to that tab, so it's interesting. So that's that, um, it shows you collections, you know, PlayStation stuff. Uh, PS Plus collection, etc. Subscription shows you your subscriptions, services, and games. And then you can just browse all the games you wish to browse to your heart's content. Um, as you can see, PS5 loads up pretty fast, and even in the store, it's way faster than PS4. PS4, even if you have a good internet connection, it used to take a while. So this is good that it's that it's fast, fast and responsive. That's what I like here um explore tab again you can explore different things photo modes other people's guides you know to games all that stuff uh live broadcasts of games you follow or video games uh popular videos of games and other things like that so it's pretty cool that it has all of this kind of like a broadcast window um so this is the games. Obviously when you move to each game, it has uh, the music play and the background shows up. You can click on play, you can scroll down, you can see the activities, things that you've done recently, achievements that you have yet to get, or you know achievements that you have progress toward getting. Uh, you know, this is news for the game, and then trending broadcasts for people, different broadcasts as, as you can see. Uh, so it has all that. If you click on the where the options button used to be on the PlayStation, if you click on that, it shows you can check for update. Uh, let's say I want to check for update. The game is already up to date. Um, here you can also close your game if it's running. 
uh, like close the application. You can manage the game content. Uh, this obviously just doesn't have any DLC, so uh, an example, this would have DLC, so if you can manage the content, you have all of that, um, etc. You can also install different languages, etc. Um, so yeah, if you see that, you can click, you can delete the application, you can click information. It's very similar to PS4 if you think about it. Um, and then intellectual property notices, game version, you can see if it's PS5 or PS4 that's installed. You can always switch if you have it installed on an external hard drive or on the PS5 SSD, you can switch to what version you wanna play. Obviously, if you have a PS5, play the PS5 version, uh, but if you have the PS4 version, you can play that as well. You can always switch to it. Um, I don't think I have the PS4 installed right now. I think I removed it because I have the PS5 now. So I wonder what happens. Oh, so yeah, it's basically, it's got the little arrow next to the PS4. As you can see, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, PS4, and it's got the arrow. That means download it, it's not downloaded. So that's why this button is here, download, you can see that. You can also view the product, unfollow. You can go back to PS5 version. If I go back to PS5 version, obviously you see the play button, it's there, it's installed on the SSD. So you can see that. If you want, you can click on learn more, you see more about the game, etc. Uh, but yeah, I switched back to the PS5. This is very important for a lot of people because if you have PS4, these games on PS4 and you bought them, you just want to make sure that you're playing the PS5 version and not the PS4. Um, PS5 has backwards compatibility, so you don't want to like make sure, you would just want to make sure that you're playing the version that you want. So again, you get to this by pushing the options button, you go down to game version and you click on PS5 full Assassin's Creed Valhalla or the PS5 version. Same thing for games like, uh, you know, Miles Morales. I had that on PS4 as well. As you can see, the background music plays as well as the thing. So I have it on PS5. So yeah, and then Devil May Cry, game version, PS5, all the other demos or whatever you have. I have this on PS4 as well. So I just gotta I, make sure you're always playing the version that you want. Bug snacks. There's only a PS5, so as you can see, it doesn't have that option. Game version doesn't have that because it's only for PS5. So you'll only see that option if it's if it's both PS4 and PS5. You just want to make sure you're playing the version that you want. Uh, again, you have Godfall. Uh, I see the DLC crap already. Look at this. This is ridiculous. Ten dollars for more shit, which should have been in the game to begin with. But I get it, they gotta make money, I get it, but I'm not really for it. Um, yeah, as you can see, trailers, videos, uh, broadcasts, add-ons, etc. Demon Souls, looking, looking forward to playing this later today. I haven't really had time, because I've been making these videos. Um, letting my niece play my PS5, as well as my brother-in-law. Um, so yeah. Looking forward to playing this later today. Um, yeah, so that's basically the gist of the PlayStation experience. You click on this, your game library, it actually shows you all your PS4 games, all your PS5 games. So now they're no longer in two separate categories like the PS4 used to be. Now it's all in one tab. Uh, all the games you own, it just has it under one tab, your collection, which is amazing because I remember on the PS4, whatever was installed only used to show up in the installed category, but then there was a whole purchased category as well. So, you know, I'm just glad everything is here all in one place. If it's a game you haven't installed, uh, it'll basically show up as, so these are the games that I actually have installed right now, but some of them will show up as this one, like right here, PS4, Thronebreaker, The Witcher Tales. I haven't installed it on my ex external hard drive or my internal, so it'll have that a little arrow at the top right that shows that you have to download it from you know the playstation network same with the sniper elite 4 you can see it's a ps plus collective that's where i got it from i didn't actually purchase it i got it from one of the free games for that month and then you can download it as well it's not downloaded uh this basically you see the little disc logo at the top right of this uh on ff12 zodiac age that basically means it's on your external or one of your hard drives uh persona 5 i and uninstalled mainly because I have the Royal right here. Persona 5 Royal, as you can see, it's unextended. 
uh, a hard drive. And then yeah, so all your games are basically here. Like, I have a lot of games on PS4 and let me tell you, I have not really had time to play and finish each one, obviously. It's just very busy life. Um, but yeah, like if I had a son or daughter, <laughs> I'm sure they would just, they would just probably never leave my room. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like this is probably like a kid's dream to have all these games, um, you know? So I think me growing up with not too much, too much availability to games, I, you know, I didn't have access to any of these. And I guess well, now that I'm an adult, I can pretty much buy whatever I want. and pretty cool you know so i mean again just enjoy what you like doing if you like playing games great do it um you know just do whatever makes you happy really so anyways uh yeah that's basically that and then you can see what's installed on your console storage as well as your extended storage so there's uh, that tab as well there's your total in collection tab and there's an install so it's good that they separated it so if you really want to weed through what you have and what you need to download you can just go straight through it um, so it's pretty cool. So yeah, game library and then PlayStation Plus. Again, it goes back to that PS Plus tab. And then PlayStation Now. Um, I think it's offered already on PS5, but I don't know. I think it is. So you just have to pay a subscription for that as well if you want like access to old games like on PS3, PS4, etc. Yeah, so... Um, and this is a service that competes with Xbox Game Pass. But yeah, guys, this is my... PS5 user interface. Um, uh, so yeah, please comment, like, and subscribe. Uh, I can put out more videos. Whatever you guys want to see, just let me know. Put it in the comments below. Um, any other like settings or things that you guys want to see, just let me know. So yeah, I'm going to end the video here. It's pretty lengthy. Feel free to go over whatever you want to look at again. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. So I'll see you guys later.